Nuclear weapons are the most deadliest weapon on the face of the Earth. A weapon that can explode at large mileage and raise in high altitude that can damage and incinerate anything in its sight is extremely terrifying. The United States, the former Soviet Union, now Russian Federation, and China, top three superpowers that have conducted many nuclear tests, still use major nuclear weapons to this day. Of course, they're still a threat, even after the post-Cold War. The United States is also the only country to have used nuclear weapons in the act of war during the end tale of World War II of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Today I want to look at 10 of the most scariest nuclear operations that were conducted throughout the height of the Cold War. And folks, I have to tell you, some of these images and some of the things you're about to see might be a bit too disturbing for you. So of course, take viewer discretion as always. Number 10, the Ivy Mike. Ivy Mike was an important test in the United States Directory for Nuclear Weapons. It was the first full-scale test of a thermonuclear device, and its yield was over 10.4 megatons of TNT. However, 77% of the final yield came from the fast fusion of the uranium tamper, which produced large amounts of radioactive fallout. The test was carried out on the 1st of November of 1952. The fireball created by the explosion had a maximum radius of 2.9 to 3.3 kilometers. The mushroom cloud rose to an altitude of 17 kilometers, 5,600 feet, I apologize, 56,000 feet, in less than 90 seconds. One minute later, it had reached 33 kilometers, 108,000 feet, before stabilizing at 41 kilometers, 135,000 feet. With the radioactive coral debris fell upon ships positioned 56 kilometers away, the immediate area around the atoll was heavily contaminated. An hour after the bomb was detonated, U.S. Air Force pilots took off from Antioch Island to fly into the atomic cloud to take samples. Pilots had to monitor extra radouts and displays while piloting under unusual, dangerous, and difficult conditions, including heat, radiation, unpredictable winds, and flying debris. Number 9. Operation Greenhouse Greenhouse was the fifth American nuclear test series, the second conducted in 1951 and the first to test principles that would lead to developing thermonuclear weapons. Conducted at the New Pacific Proven Grounds, specifically on the islands of Anahuatak Atoll, all of the devices were mounted in large steel towers to stimulate air bursts. Operation Greenhouse represented new and aggressive designs for nuclear weapons. The main idea was to reduce the size, weight, and most importantly, reduce the amount of fissile material necessary for nuclear weapons while increasing the destructive power. With the Soviet Union's first nuclear test a year and a half earlier, the United States had begun stockpiling new designs before they were actually proven. Thus the success of Operation Greenhouse was vital before the development of thermonuclear weapons could continue. One of the infamous of Operation Greenhouse, the George Bomb, the George explosion was the world's first thermonuclear burn though it was just a test design unsuitable for weaponization. Shaped like a torus, the George device had a small amount of heavy isotopes of liquid hydrogen, deuterium and trinium, placed at its center. The vast majority of its yield derived from fusion. The energy output from the thermonuclear fusion in this test was insignificant in comparison. The George device was more like a boosted atomic bomb than a thermonuclear one. The small amount of heavy deuterium and neutrinium in this test fused, but its role was to generate a strong flurry of fast neutrons, ones that sparked more fusions on the uranium nuclei that were present, which also caused fusion in uranium-238, which does not fusion under bombardment with slow neutrons as on compared to uranium-235. Greenhouse conducted four tests, including George, while the other three were Dog, Easy, and Item. George was the third, and while it was also successful with the other three, it showed that this operation was the paving standpoint for what we would see eventually with thermonuclear weapons. Number 8. Operation Teapot Operation Teapot was a series of 14 nuclear test explosions that were conducted at the Nevada test site during the first half of 1955. The following 14 core code names were Wasp, Moth, Tesla, Turk, Hornet, B, ESS, 
Wasp Prime, Apple One, HA, Post, MET, Apple II, and Zucchini. While a majority of nuclear tests from this operation were focused on weapon development, the operation spawned four weapons with success and indifference for each one. WASP provided an elevation drop of 1,268 to 230 meters, causing a large fire blow to implode in front of escaping soldiers taking part in Exercise Desert Rock 6. The MAT was the first bomb core to include uranium-233, rarely used Thistle isotope that is the product of thorium-232 neutron absorption, along with plutonium, and this was based on the plutonium U-235 pit from the TX-7E, a prototype Mark 7 nuclear bomb design used in 1951 Operation Buster Jangle Easy test. It produced a yield of 202 kilometers, comparable to the Fat Man plutonium only weapon that exploded over Nagasaki but significantly less than the expected amount. And since it was a military effects test, the Department of Defense specified that the device should have collaborated yield within 10% of ratings. However, weapon designers at the Los Alamos substituted the experimental core without notifying the Department of Defense. The unexpected lower yield, 33% less of the Department of Defense expected, ruined many of the military's tests. The Civil Defense Apple II that was shot on May 5th, 1955, was intended to test various build and construction types in a nuclear blast. An assortment of buildings, including residential houses and electrical substations, were constructed in the site nicknamed Survival Town, or Doom Town. Many people might also see inspiration for this nowadays, as this appeared to be one of the infamous scenes in Indiana Jones 4 with a nuke test site, as well as also in the Call of Duty game Nuketown. Number 7. Operation Hardtack Operation Hardtack was a series of over 20 to 35 nuclear detonations throughout the Pacific Ocean. These tests proved to be outside the atmosphere of a typical U.S. base, and the bombs were detonated in water. When shown in water, the bombs proved to be massive and explosive, causing the entire ocean to shake violently and all around who are miles or kilometers away to hear and feel the vibration. Several of the infamous tests included some rather notorious proportions, such as Yucca, which was fired first. It was a high-altitude balloon test at 86,000 feet from the ABM development. Another was Cactus, a test of a Mark 43, led to a large scale of radiation and contamination in the soil. The Oak nuclear test was conducted on the 28th of 1958's June, and proved to be a successful detonation proven to explode over 8.9 megatons. Number 6. Operation Storix Often regarded as one of the most influential and most controversial underground tests in history, the United States conducted the Storax operation from 1962 to 1963. Their first test, the Sedan, proved to be one of the military's biggest conceptions. The Sedan was a shallow underground nuclear test conducted in Area 10 of the Yucca Flat at the Nevada National Security Site on July 6, 1962, as part of Operation Plowshare, a program to investigate the use of nuclear weapons for mining, cratering, and other civilian purposes. The radioactive fallout from the test contaminated more U.S. residents than any nuclear test. The Sedan Crater is one of the largest human-made craters in the U.S. and is listed above the National Register of Historic Places. The crater was so strong and so impactful that many of the civilians who were around the perimeter borders had received radiation poisoning and sickness. Number 5. Operation Dominic Operation Dominic was a series of 36 nuclear test explosions with a 38.1 megaton total yield conducted in 1962 by the United States in the Pacific. The test series was scheduled quickly in order to respond to the kind of the Soviet resumption of testing after the Tassi at 1958 to 1961 test moratorium. Most of these shots were conducted with freefall bombs dropped from B-52 bomber aircrafts. 
20 of those shots were to test new weapon designs, 6 to test weapon effects, and several shots to confirm the reability of existing weapons. The Thor missile was also used to lift warheads into near space to conduct high-altitude nuclear explosion tests. These shots were collectively called Operation Fishbowl. Operation Dominic occurred during a period of high Cold War tension between the U.S. and the Soviet Union following the chaotic Cuban Bay of Pigs invasion that had occurred not too long before. Nikita Khrushchev had announced at the end of the three-year monitorium of nuclear testing on the 30th of August 1961 that Soviet tests would be commenced on September 1st, initiating a series of tests that concluded and inducted a detonation of Shar Bama one of the largest nuclear explosions from the Soviet Union. President Kennedy at the time responded by authorizing Operation Dominic. It was the largest nuclear weapons testing program ever conducted by the U.S. and the last atmospheric test series conducted by the U.S. as a limited time test ban treaty was signed in Moscow that following year. Number four, Operation Red Wing. Operation Red Wing was a U.S. test series of 17 nuclear test assassinations from May to July 1956. They were conducted at Bikini and Entawaka Tolls. The entire operation followed Operation Wigwam and preceded Operation Plumbob. The primary intention was to test new, second-generation thermonuclear devices. Also tested were fusion devices intended to be used as primaries for thermonuclear weapons and small tactical weapons for air defense. Red Wing demonstrated the first U.S. airdrop of a deliberative hydrogen bomb, test codename Cherokee. Because the yields for many tests at Operation Castle in 54 were dramatically higher than predicted, Red Wing was conducted using an energy budget. There were limits the total amount of energy released and the amount of fusion yield was also strictly controlled. Fusion, primarily fast fusion, of the natural uranium tamper surrounding the fusion capsule greatly increases the yield of a thermonuclear device and contributes the vast majority of the fallout, fusion being a relatively clean reaction. Cherokee dropped over 3.8 megatons being the first US airdrop of a thermonuclear bomb, a Mark 15 nuclear bomb, enormously detonated four miles off target, with the Zuni being dropped 3.5 megatons, the first test of a three-stage thermonuclear design, the bassoon device. Number three, the Ivy King. Ivy King was the largest pure fusion nuclear bomb ever tested by the United States. The bomb was tested during the Truman administration as part of Operation Ivy. The series of tests involved development of a very powerful nuclear weapon of the production of Ivy King, as it was hurried so it would be ready for its sister project, Ivy Mike. Failed in its attempt to achieve that thermonuclear reaction, the Ivy King test actually took place two weeks after Mike. Unlike the Mike bomb, the Ivy King device theoretically had been added to the United States nuclear arsenal because it was designed to be air deliverable. On November 16, 1952, a B-36H bomber dropped the bomb over a point of 2,000 feet north of Runnan Island in the Inuitak Atoll, resulting in a 500 kiloton explosion at 1,480 feet in the air. The Trapapawa's height at the time of the detonation was about 58,000 feet. The top of the King Cloud reached about 74,000 feet, with the mushroom base at about 40,000 feet. The Ivy King bomb, designed as an MK-18 bomb, named the Super Orally Bomb, was a modified version of the MK-6D bomb. Instead of using an implosion system similar to the MK-6D, it used a 92-point implosion system initially developed for the MK-13. Its uranium plutonium core was replaced by 60 kilograms of highly enriched uranium, fashioned into a thin-walled sphere equivalent approximately of four critical masses. The thin-walled spear was a commonly used design which ensured that the fizzle material remained subcritical until imploded. Number 2. Operation Plumbob 
Operation Plum Bob was a series of nuclear tests conducted between May 28th and October 7th of 1957 at the Nevada test site following Project 57 and preceding Project 58. It was the biggest, longest, and one of the most controversial test series in the contentional United States nuclear arms race. The operation consisted of 29 explosions, of which only two did not provide any nuclear yield. 21 laboratories and government agencies were involved in this operation, and while most of Plum Bob's tests contributed to the development of warheads for intercontinental and intermediate range missiles, they also tested air defense and anti-submarine warheads with smaller yields. A controversial factor to this was that animals were used for these tests. Almost 1,200 pigs were subjected to biomedical experiments and blast effect studies during Operation Plum Bob. Approximately 18,000 members of the U.S. Air Force, Army, Navy, and Marines participated in exercises Desert Rock 7 and 8 during Operation Plum Bob. The military was interested in knowing how the average foot soldier would stand up physically and psychologically to the rigors of the tactical nuclear battlefield. Studies were conducted of radiation contamination and fallout from a simulated accidental detonation of a weapon, and the products concerning earth motion, blast loading, and neutron output were carried out. Nuclear weapons safety experiments were conducted to study the possibility of a nuclear weapon detonation during an accident. On July 26, 1957, a safety experiment, Pascal A, was detonated in an unstemmed hole in the Nevada test site, becoming the first underground shaft nuclear test. The knowledge gained here would provide data to prevent nuclear yields in the case of an accidental detonation, as for example, a plane crash. Number 1. Operation Castle Operation Castle was a United States series of high-yield and high-energy nuclear tests by the Joint Task Force 7 at Bikini Atoll beginning in March of 1954. Operation Castle was considered by the government officials to be a success as it was proved to be the feasibility of deployable dry fuel designs for thermonuclear weapons. There were tactical difficulties, however, with some of the tests. One device had a yield much lower than predicted, a quote-unquote fizzle, while two other devices detonated over twice over predicted yields. One test in particular, Castle Bravo, resulted in extensive radiological contamination of nearby islands, including inhabitants and U.S. soldiers stationed there, as well as a nearby Japanese fishing boat, the Diego Fukuru Maru, resulting in one direct fatality and continued health problems for many of those exposed. Public reaction to the test and an awareness of the long-range effects of nuclear fallout had been attributed as being part of the motivation for the Partial Test Ban Treaty of 63. Castle Bravo was the code name given to the first U.S. test of a dry fuel thermonuclear weapon hydrogen bomb. Detonated on March 1, 1954 at Bikini Atoll, Marshall Islands, as the first test of Operation Castle. Castle Bravo was the most powerful nuclear device ever detonated by the United States, and just under one-third the energy of the most powerful ever detonated, with a yield of 15 megatons of TNT. The device detonated for the test was named Shrimp, and was the same basic configuration as the experimental Ivy Mike device, except with a different type of fusion fuel. The Shrimp used a lithium deuteride, which was solid at room temperature. Ivy Mike used cryogenic liquid deuterium, which required elaborate cooling equipment. Castle Bravo was the first test by the U.S. of a practical deliverable fusion bomb, the hydrogen bomb. The successful test rendered the cryogenic design used by Ivy Mike and its derivative, the Mark 16 nuclear bomb, obsolete. When Bravo was detonated, it formed a fireball almost four and a half miles, roughly seven kilometers across within a second. This fireball was visible of the Kwajalein Toll over 250 miles, 400 kilometers away. The explosion left a crater of 6,500 feet in a diameter and 250 feet in depth. The mushroom cloud reached a height of 47,000 feet and a diameter of 7 miles in about a minute. It then reached a height of 130,000 feet and 62 miles in diameter in less than 10 minutes. And to this day, it is the United States' most powerful accomplishment in nuclear physics. You have seen some pretty disturbing explosions. What one was your favorite? Write a comment down below, and if you would also like to see more videos like this, feel free to contribute to that as well. 
Thank you all for taking the time to listen to my nuclear video. You all have a good day, and keep an eye out for the bright sky.